of you that stayed. I appreciate it. I think at this point, I'm happy to take any new comments from anyone in the public that wishes to, to give them or make their opinion known. At that point, I'll ask anyone on the board if they have any opinions that they would like to share. And then we will adjourn for the evening to revisit this on October 7th at our next meeting. Yes, sir. Jim. Ed Winter, Golden Circle, Southampton. <clears throat> I've been a builder in town for quite a few years. <clears throat> I think the town has taken a wrong approach on this. <clears throat> the gas company is uh, doing a lot of extensions around town. <clears throat> if a plumber goes in and hooks up a furnace, but he needs gas, is the gas company going to come from Hoyoke, or uh, inspector going to come from Hoyoke, or are they going to have set days for inspections, like Tuesday, Thursday? <clears throat> Very important. If they get a changeover during the winter, they need heat. Um, I can't believe we're pushing so hard to get this. I don't know who's behind it. And there's a lot of misinformation going out in the paper also that Mr. Walunas is our uh, wiring inspector. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know who's given this information. He checked with the reporter from the Gazette and it came from this town hall that Mr. Walunas was, matter of fact, the person that's missing right now. <clears throat> when people sell a house, a lot of times there's two or three houses involved. And it happens quite frequently on the same day. If you get an inspector that doesn't show, the dominoes go down. All of them. It doesn't stop with one. They all go down. Um, this is, the people we have here are reliable. I understand there's a 72-hour period that they have to come. I had it pulled on me a couple times because the guy, the fire chief, didn't like me. That's okay. I had. Brad, everybody loves you. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, this, this is this is going the wrong way. As far as putting in front of the town, I respect what one of the gentlemen said because I was watching this on TV and then I kind of woke up. I said, "This needs attention." I don't, I don't think it has to. <laughs> I, I don't, th uh, somebody had the, uh, w the gentleman in the back, he says, the townspeople isn't going to know it's going to hurt them until it hurts them, and then it's too late. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jim? Jim Fisher, uh, 15 Montgomery Road, and I am the wiring inspector. Um, you know, all the numbers I've heard, I've, I've seen my own wages misquoted by the board. I've seen the plumbing uh, misquoted. The fact that we don't charge for reinspections, I charge for all my reinspections. I don't know where you're getting your information. Uh, the building inspectors was uh, misquoted, his earnings. I can't trust your $20,000. I don't know where you're getting your figures. You know what I'm saying? You're saying 20,000. This proposal was the same one we saw three meetings ago. Why didn't, you, why didn't you include that dollar amount and everything so we could see it in black and white? You're telling us you're gonna save 20,000. Where, how? I, I can't trust you. you. It seems like you don't have your facts correct. I, I was told I was a subcontractor. I'm an I'm a employee of the town. I think that this meeting is meant to get your input, and it's a working meeting. So knowing that there's information that we don't have and information that we still need to find, I, nobody can deny that. You know? So if the numbers are wrong from one place, and I apologize. I'm, I'm giving you the information that I'm getting and doing our best to communicate that information to you. So 
this meeting is helpful for me because it, it gives me an idea of where you all stand and what information we, we didn't think about that we need to have thought about and what information we still need to find out. Well, you need to really crunch the numbers. What did the building inspector for our town make last year? What did the town earn out of that? We don't know. It's been asked three meetings ago. The, the answer was, I don't know. You need to compare that against what Hoyoke's going to charge us and what we're going to make. Is that money from the electrical inspector and gas inspector, is that going into the general fund or is that going to end up being used to pay the building inspector? And then you're not making anything. Nobody's come to me and said, hey, could, could you raise your fees? Nobody's come to the building inspector. Do it right in-house. It, it was already said, it was already stated. I'm just beating a dead horse here. I don't know why we need nothing personal. I don't know why we need Holyoke to, to make profits in the building department. It, we're good enough to do it ourselves. That's all. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to point out that um, I know that everybody's concerned about money, and I know money's tight, um, but you're speaking to a group of people who are in the housing industry, and unless you have been under a rock, the housing industry for the last five years has struggled. I'm going to venture to say the vast majority of people in here are making less money than they made five years ago. So to put it on them is really hard to believe. So I know you think you're going to save 20000 for the kids, and nobody swore the kids more than the people here. They have their families here. They're concerned about the teachers. They're concerned about every aspect. When you offer a service and when you offer a business, your expenses should be charged in fees. So it's up to you to analyze the cost of providing that service, but I don't think you should be making a profit on the backs of the future homeowners because whatever you charge gets passed on to the homeowner and housing is very expensive as it is. So my only concern is, is that while you are making your tax revenue is not less than it was last year, but you don't have money to pay for the same services, we've had to learn to live with less and do a better job and become more efficient because of less money. In my own office, which is a real estate office, I've had a five-year freeze on salary. A five-year freeze. This year has been the first year that it's been actually a little bit better. Not as good as it was, but a little bit better. So my only concern is, is that, that you recognize the fact that this industry does a lot more than just provide homes. It provides jobs, and it provides a community. So I think it's very important um, to remember that they deserve the best service that they possibly can get. And it's really important to remember that when they look for an inspection, they might have a wood guy putting hardwood floors in the next day. If the inspector doesn't show up, then that guy that laying the floors, he can't do it, and then all of a sudden he's got another job and you can't get him for weeks. And it ends up costing thousands of dollars. So I you know, just keep that into consideration. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Boyle. I'd like to just Clarify this $20,000 that's coming to enter your house. It's bothering me because I see Dave talking about the kids and Proposition 2 and a half of the But actually, that $20,000 that would be going to the, into the fund from the wiring fund inspectors that would go directly into them, and they're, they're gone, Coyotes in. That $20,000 is in salary, which I think is $19,000 in the first proposal. Plus, they added in this contract. $40 fee per inspection. So really, it's, it's got to be some kind of a loss there because there are being the salaries going in for those plumbing and fire inspectors in oil that these guys aren't getting. So it's washing that $20,000. That one's starting to bother me, I guess, that everybody keeps bantering that around. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Rancourt. George Rancourt with White Wolf Road. I'd like to point out something about two and a half. That Doc brings up every time he turns around. Two and a half, two and a half. That's all here is two and a half. This year, based on $10 million budget on taxes, we'll bring in $250,000 on two and a half. And we have a $14 million budget. We will bring in $250,000 this year. We will bring in $250,000 next year plus and the following year. So what are we talking about, 20? And we have 250,000 coming in this year. 
I don't know if it's already spent. I don't know what we're doing with it. Obviously, it's going to be used, but every year at two and a half, and just, that's just based on the 10 million, there's $250,000 more in our budget. But that doesn't cover the cost, George. I don't care, you're still bringing in 250000 It doesn't cover the cost. Then you've got to cut costs. Okay. Cut costs. All right. Okay. And one of the costs I came up with. salary for being a selectman? Let's, no, not no. Get, wait, let's not get off track. Let's no, let you round take a break. So there's still 250000 coming in this year. Okay. This doesn't cover costs. You grow. Thank you. If there are no more comments, yes, Mr. Swanson. Just one point of clarification. Earlier in this meeting, uh, it became very clear that this Board of Selectmen was not on the same page as to what you did and the action that you took on July 29th of this year. I think most of the people in here were under the assumption that you had voted to enter into a regional program with Holyoke. Uh, David, on the other hand, tonight was under the assumption, and you voted for this thing. You were there that night. That there were three of you that voted for it. <coughs> you were under the assumption that your vote was to study it, to evaluate it. Proceed to, to evaluate, yes, Mr. Swan. Right. So this, my question is, we, we need a declaration from your board. What did you do that night? Did you just, did you enter into an agreement or did you decide to study it? Which is it? We decided to look into it. We did not look in, we did not make any agreement with Holyoke that night. We decided to look into this plan, which is what we're doing. And this is part of that. Okay, that's very important. Thank you. Vicki? I just have a question. Of, I just, as like all of you just got this, and I'm trying to understand some of these numbers, if you, if you can bear with me for two seconds. So if, I, if I'm going to help do an analysis of that whole $20,000, I need to know what I'm comparing. So these, this last page here, page B, this is just for the building. So on top of this, we're going to do $40, $40 per inspection for the inspectors. No salaries, no nothing, just $40. Right. Am I understanding that correctly? Yeah, there's only a charge there's if it's used. There's only a charge for if it's used. Okay. It's used. I just want to make sure I understand that piece. Thank you. Yes, sir. How many of the proposal says no? This one does. Well. Uh, this draft does. Now I'm just making sure that. So there's no salaries in there for the plumbing. Not in this draft that this was just. Co correct. The, the original, the original conversation. conversation was was just a building commissioner, just an assistant with a building commissioner authority, or the whole kit and caboodle? How did you figure it rained this in? I didn't hear. The original proposal had eighteen or nineteen thousand dollars in there for the plumbing and wiring inspector. How does the proposal stay the same? The figure is about the same, ninety-four thousand. No, I, I think that, I think in the newest one, I think that it's down to seventy something. Yes. I think it's down. On the one that was passed out tonight. But, and the reason for that, the reason why it was adjusted is because we, we could not be provided, for whatever reason, um, numbers of how many permits were actually pulled and how is many were seconds. Is that for one year or is that for, is that for one year or four months? Is that, is that? Which? The 70,000 for one year. For one year. For a 12 month period, right. So because we couldn't say, you know, what is your average, what's your five year average of permits for electrical, for plumbing, for sheet metal, well, I don't even think you guys do sheet metaling yet. Yeah, uh, okay, so for sheet metaling, whatever they are, what are those numbers? At the time we were asked to put these numbers together, we weren't giving those, so we said, we'll back away from giving you a firm number, and we'll just come up with a price to say, this is what it would cost manpower for us to send somebody to do it per inspection. If you use it, it's $40, and in general, your fee should cover that. And somebody brought it up earlier, adjusting your free, your fees, and that should be part that you look at. Anyways. In other words, your plumbing inspector doesn't get overtime besides that $40. Our, pl our plumbing inspector is paid a salary. It, well, our plumbing inspector in Hoyok is an hourly wage. So he's, he's guaranteed 35 hours of income, 35 hours of income. If in the event he had to utilize overtime, 
that would be on our expense. It's not going to be a, we're not going to charge you sixty dollars for forty dollar inspection for time and a half. Well, it's forty dollars. What you're saying doesn't make sense to me because basically your your finance committee and oil should reject that deal. It seems to me. Well, and you know we have three plumbing inspectors, right? So we have three plumbing inspectors in Hoyle, not just one. We have one full time, and then we have two per diems or subcontractors that would be the fee process. But yet it takes a week for an inspection. I've never had that experience in Hoyle, but I'm not in your shoes. I saw him. Yes, sir. My name is Tommy Sears. I'm the plumbing gas inspector in town here. Uh, I just want to clear uh, one thing about with the fee, the, uh, um, with the board, about the cut, the 80 percent. On that 80 percent, we'll just pick the number $100 for a permit. The town gets $20, and then as an inspector, we, I would get the $80. In that $80, I may have to go back to that uh, job four times. Now, in that four times, could be uh, maybe four hours a time, and it could be maybe up to 100 miles for round trips in uh, mileage. Uh, I know Jim, the electrical inspector, Jim Fisher, and myself, we don't put in for mileage. Uh, and other cell phone use, we don't put in for any of that. So in that $80, we get tax on that, and I'm just saying maybe $67 it comes out of it. And with the federal rate uh, for reimbursement for fuel is 56 cents a mile. You know, I mean, I think we're doing a service for the town. And I think and that's what we really like to do is the service for the town. Thank you. Thank you. November 1st through June 2015, and then the other one being the annual. Would the article separate those two? <laughs> it's bungled now. I'm, I'm beginning to seriously wonder with, with all of the comments you've heard tonight, you're going to hear the same comments uh, at, the, at the town meeting. I can't believe that, I can't understand why you're even pursuing this thing. I really can't. There is no money for you. I don't know about your, I don't know about your, I don't know about your question. Okay. Well, that was the question, would it be, you know, separated because the agreement right now as it's written, it's two agreement periods, two, one full fiscal year and um, November through. I think that we will have to wait and see if an article is presented to us on Thursday to answer your question. Okay. And the other part, would there also need to be an article to transfer money out of the salary account to cover that component? Is that something that would have to happen for 2015? It is sure sounding right that way at this moment, but I guess. Just to give a thought. Thanks. Yes, sir. To answer Nilda's question, anything that I, I would develop would be the general question of whether you wish to, whether the town wishes to, uh, you know, further engage with Hoyle Venice. Has, just straight Has anybody, how many permits are issued a year total? All permits. Plumbing, plumbing, electrical, building, total permits a year. How many are? How many I, don't, are I don't have the number, but I know I believe plumbing and gas last year, when I had the assistant pull it today, was about 142. Okay. Um, and for electrical, don't quote me on this one, but yep, I want to say it was in the minutes. 70s, and I have no idea with regards to the building inspection. So, 280. 280. Um, so, can we say it's roughly 500 permits a year, Paul? Total, total so, permits. Yeah. So let's just say that's safe to say. We're we're going to say, so right now it costs us twelve hundred dollars a year to run these three departments. Is what you're talking about. Total. That's what I heard, right? What do you mean by cost? When you take all the money in, you take all the money out. What's left is costing the town twelve hundred dollars. Can I see those papers? 
Can I get back to you on that? Okay. So, uh, hypothetically, so what I'm saying is as much as none of us here want to pay more per lead fees, but if you got to tack on $10 more per permit, that's $5,000 without going through any of this stuff. Thank you. It's going to be so easy to do and you're done. And if we have to raise it to $20 a month, again, none of us want to see it, but, and again, you're putting this cost directly to the homeowner because, you know, it's not like it's coming out of our pay. We add it onto the bill. But if that's what we have to do, there's $10,000 without any of this work, which means we all go home there. I mean, Obviously, as you can hear, the town stays happy. Well, that's important. Um, so I'm going to turn this meeting over to the Board of Selectmen at this point. If anyone has any comments they would like to make, um, now would be the time. Mr. Powell. Uh, I got some comments. Uh, I, first of all, I have to apologize. I, I've been out of here for about seven or eight weeks with some personal issues. And um, um, some of the things that I hear tonight, I agree with you 100%. Some I think that are just rumor mill. But one thing that I, I see has not been emphasized at all is that the building inspector, half his job is enforcement. And I really don't think Hoyoke's going to be able to do that enforcement, only because they don't know the town, they don't know what it is. But this enforcement that Rich was required to do uh, when he came in here was fairly new because I think Rich was the first salary individual that came here in this position. And I, back then I was the highway superintendent and the board asked me my input on what the criteria should be. And I says, the building inspector part of the job is a no brainer, but I think you have to realize there's a zoning enforcement issue here. And that goes on sad and unchecked and that gets out of hand. People take advantage of it and they're not watched. And I do believe that Rich has come in here and does dead, a sizable amount of his week's job was enforcement. Now, through that enforcement, the town indirectly got a lot of money. Am I right, Rich? He had to go to court. I've gone to court with Rich several different times to fight her case. These are things that are not being mentioned. Uh, I do believe Hoyoke um, has qualified individuals to do the job, but I do believe that if this is done, that the enforcement part of this job, which is important, and I think there's two or three boards here that, it could, that attested to that, Rich gives them additional advice and goes out in the field for them. And um, I do believe that Rich uh, had every intention of training this individual, but uh, this board did not move fast enough to get his replacement in. First of all, it wasn't easy trying to find people. Second of all, uh, we weren't meeting every week at that time. But um, we limped through it. We're here, this is very important for the town fathers, or town select board to hear. But I just wanna let you know, my comments are, I'll probably be opposed to this because the zoning enforcement uh, part of this is not being addressed to my liking. And uh, I don't think that can be done under this sizable contract that would be issued. Now, you might think I'm off base on this, but if this stuff is not watched and monitored and enforced, people are gonna get out of hand and we're gonna lose more money and more money and more money. It's not just the building inspector part of this job, in my eyes. It's the inspection of the zoning bylaws and, and issues that have to be looked at by the building inspector that are under everybody's radar. But unless you work in this town, uh, and you know what Rich does, these are things that are important, and these are things that are gonna be lost. I don't need your applause, I don't need any of that. I just know one thing, that we need to consider that factor very importantly. That's it. Well, um, I can't speak directly to this, but I can say, and I always do feel confident in the townspeople, and I'm happy to say, I'm happy to see that we're at least going to consider voting in the town meeting about it. That's all I can say. <laughs> um, I think I've said enough, but just in conclusion, our role up here is to be creative as possible because of the limitations of revenue for the town. And 
this was one aspect to look at to see what we could say for the town. If, if there comes an instance where we just say, yeah, we don't want to deal with it because it's an unpleasant experience to sit up here and talk about it, then we're not doing our job. Our job is not supposed to be easy. It's supposed to be hard. We're trying to make decisions for everybody in town, what's best for the town. I do appreciate everybody coming out and sharing their experience and their, their opinions regarding this. Um, I would have to agree with Mr. Colley on the enforcement issue. Uh, I've talked to Rich about that in the past. But in the end, our job is to try to do what's right for the town, all of the town. And, you know, I can't say for any exact precision that we would save $20,000. But if we could save $20,000 and still provide the same service, then that's something that I would be in favor for. Because that $20,000 would mean a lot for the town. That's how tight the money is at this time. And I would just like to say that being new, sitting up here, is, is probably one of the toughest things you're ever going to do. You're, I'm never going to make everyone in town happy, and all I can do is make the best choice that I think is for Southampton. And I, I kind of feel like this issue has been a bit blown up. I don't think that the intent of the board on July 29th was to enter into any specific agreement. I think it was to look at all possible options at that moment about this, about this plan. And I think that this meeting is, is a big part of it. It's very eye-opening to hear what everyone has to say. This room is not full like this on Tuesday night, on a normal Tuesday night. So to know what everybody else thinks is really hard to do. I, I, can't, I don't know what you're thinking at home until you come in to a meeting like this. So although there, it can get a little contentious and heated, I wouldn't know your opinions otherwise. So for me, this meeting is very helpful. It's very eye-opening, and it has given me a lot to think about. At this point, I would take a motion to adjourn, and um, we will revisit this after we've all had some time to think about it on October 7th. Move to adjourn. Is there a second? Second, sir. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it.